Welcome everyone. So glad that you can join me today. It is a happy second line day. Really glad to have you here. And as we look at the transits throughout um, this session, this next hour together, if you have any questions, please feel free to use the chat, not the chat, sorry, Q&A box. There's a Q&A box because we are in a webinar format. So it um, allows for me not to be distracted by chat and it allows for me to focus on your questions at the end of this little neutrino news you can use taking a look at the transits with you. Primarily, I'm, I'm looking at this for students of human design. So this might not be a very good place to begin if you're brand, brand new to human design. By the way, we do have a new session, new series um, that's going to be called an intro introduction to human design and the first of that is kicking off on Sunday January 24th at 10 a.m. so if it's about two hours later than what we're doing right now today so just wanted to let you know that that's there if you'd like to go if you'd like to come there's no charge it's totally free there's no obligation to continue it's the kickoff uh, class for a new group of living your design awakening experiencers and there are several teachers that are going to be starting myself included uh, the following week so you're definitely welcome to join us there now without further ado let's talk about our sunday sessions which is again neutrino news you can use and taking a look at our transit report i always begin with the line quality of the day it is a right angle cross of laws second line day and on second line days it can be kind of challenging to show up because you might feel more hermit like you might want to do your own thing you might want to only do what comes natural to you you might feel a bit of reluctance um, people need to call you out a little bit more because remember everybody has everything in the body graph so you're going to be amplifying these energies now as i go down this particular stream of energy that we're all dealing with today the way that i describe what's happening in the body graph is from the perspective of if you have this then this is what may happen so the way that I'm going to be most successful in conveying this information to you in very generalized terms that will still land or resonate if it's in alignment with what's going on in your design is to focus on speaking from the perspective of the center itself being undefined and then you having the gate activation on the other side. Okay, so what I want you to do if you don't already have it is make sure that you always come to these Sunday sessions with a printed out version of your body graph, uh, avoiding, you know, getting distracted by your computer or other things. And just to kind of see, take a look at what you're noticing, and then just highlight in your body graph on your piece of paper, whatever it is that I'm speaking to, and maybe some keynotes of what you might notice. And for those of you who are studying human design as a spiritual practice, or even a professional practice, this will help you also learn the language if you can practice with observing the transit energy throughout the week as it's amplified within your design because these planets are the best teachers on earth really when you have an activation in your design let's say you have the 30 and you don't have the other side what you're going to notice is that, and especially if you have an undefined center here or here, what you're going to notice about this channel is really going to teach you a lot when it's active in your design. So a few uh, basic components, the language that I'm going to use to remind you, when it comes to undefined center, we have several undefined centers in the body graph going on today. When it comes to totally open center, we have two totally open centers in the body graph today. When it comes to a conditioning receptor, so you have a conditioning receptor on one side, the transit is bringing in the mental conditioner on the other side of that center. And then you will have potentially an experience of what that energy is like temporarily inside of your body while you're living life. You can, per perhaps you can use that energy, that awareness that I'm giving you, use that energy if it's right for you. Always making sure that you experiment with your decision-making strategy, which is derived from your type and your authority. So if you experiment with decision-making strategy and you see these energies coming in and you have the other side of the channel, so it creates a full uh, energy 
circuit, if you will, not a, a circuit it's in totality, but an aspect of a circuit, you're going to find that you learn more about this physically in your life, way more than you could by reading a book, way more than you could by listening to me speak, if you actually take this knowledge and put it into practice, okay? So I'm happy to see so many familiar faces and some I haven't seen before. Welcome to the group. Again, remember you can use that um, Q&A box to ask questions, not about your particular chart, because we're not doing chart work today, we're just looking at transits, okay? So that's my uh, beginning preamble. And let's take a look at what we're going to be expecting from today's energies. You can see later on in the day, we're going to switch to a third line day. So on third line days, it's bonds made and broken. But for right now, you know, doing your own thing, feeling kind of shy, maybe vacillating into boldness if you're feeling called out, but having this energy for limitation. That's where 70% of the energy stream is derived from in the neutrinos is coming from our sun. So the core essence of what we're all faced with right now is a deeply pressurized gate in the root center, which is our center for drive and stamina. And it's an individual circuitry, meaning this is an energy that fluctuates. It turns on and it turns off. Most often it's off, nothing's happening, nothing's happening, nothing's happening. And then all of a sudden, boom, you have this energy that moves you forward. It's this energy for mutation because this is a motor function that's going to empower, if you have the gate three on the other side, your ability to overcome the limitation and bring about order. So you might be feeling when this kind of energy is there, like frustrated or stuck nothing's happening, nothing's happening. I want something new to happen. I feel pressured. I feel stressed. Remember when I say I, I'm speaking from the mind inside of your head, the voice inside of your head about yourself, especially if you've got the center undefined, okay? And if you've got the three on the other side and you've got this center on to find the sacral center, our, our center for energy resource, which is about the fecundity of life's creative processes for us as human beings to make more and to take care of that which we make. When you have this energy in your design, you don't always have the availability to bring about order. But now with this transit, you might. So remember, if you're any kind of authority other than sacral, which if you have this undefined, you're not sacral authority. Let's say you're emotional authority or you're a mental authority, meaning uh, environmental mental projector. Then you have to have your authority process, which is either waiting for clarity over time or talking it out with other people in your environment. So therefore, if you try to make a spontaneous decision, to mutate, to act, to do something, you might be overzealous and you might not know when enough is enough. So that's the thing to watch out for. Sudden movement, sudden pressure, sudden stress that you're trying to get rid of as fast as possible in order to get something done. Watch out for that. Okay, if you have an authority that needs its processing time, wait, if you have a mental authority that needs, sorry, I keep saying mental, but it's mental projector and it's environmental authority that needs its processing time. The most damaging thing you can do as either of these two authorities is to make a sudden choice. Okay, so sudden choices, beware of those. Now where this energy of limitation, the energy of limitation itself, that pulsing pressure to mutate, where it's going to be grounded is in the throat center. And that throat center is about our communication and speaking. And here specifically, specifically, it's about languaging, stimulating a story and a, a past experience, perhaps providing some faith or some hope or some belief in something better to come based on what we've made sense of from the past. So this is a deeply curious gate that is about being able to share what it remembers through storytelling. So you might notice if you have a gate 11, okay, this is creating a channel that's about curiosity. Seeking and searching is something that you're always looking to try and stimulate other people with your ideas. And when this transit comes in, now we have the 56 that gives you the energy to be able to tell that story, to share those ideas. So if it's correct for you to share, wonderful. If it's not correct for you to share, you might find yourself blabbing. And what you'll hear is, I believe. That's the voice of I believe. 
I believe this, I believe that, I'm certain that it must be this way because this is where we've been. So that's something to watch out for. To not make a decision based on what you say you believe, but always put that decision making back home where you can trust it, which is your own personal authority process. In this process and in this journey of using this information for yourself, it's important that we pay attention to our own personal practices or for whatever of whatever keeps us grounded. Because right now we're in a very pressurized place. As you can see from the root center at the sun, okay, so that's 70%. That's physical pressure. And as you can see from the Pluto, which is our truth, transformation, and psychology. It's what we're here learning about because of the transits. It's opposite in the body graph and it's at the head. And that's mental pressure. So if you're not defined in the head center and you're not defined in the root center, you're amplifying physical and mental pressure. And if you've got the 24, so back to what we're talking about today, which was, you know, this energy that's here, T talk about trying to pretend to be certain about things. This gate 61 uh, is where Pluto has been. There's a, a little bit of its back and forth movement over time, but it stays in a gate around three years or such. It's a really long time. As you can see, it recently moved into the line five. And now this mental pressure that we've all been getting really familiar with over the last couple of years is creating this energy to want to share what we've learned because this stream here not stream but um circuit the circuit this individual knowing circuit it's pressurized by these two gates sandwiched by these two gates on either side so the head center is about inspiration and it's about the ability to find out what's interesting and this one this gate is about questions as far as why I like to call it the why in the sky so now everybody who's thinking that they or pressurized we could say pressurized that they need to be empowered by sharing or not um, explaining or not their experiences in order to come to a level of knowing awareness why are things happening what the heck's happening you know what's going on it's all about questions here with the head center so if you don't have the head center defined but you do have the 24 defined then what is happening is you have a fear of ignorance built into your genetic potentials. It leads you to drive you to want to find the answers to the mysteries of life or the, the, the awarenesses, because this is a channel that is about awareness. It's the design of a thinker. So now we have all of this energy or this potential awareness that leads you to want to be certain about why and what the great mysteries are all about. So wondering why, wondering when wondering how wondering who that's what this is all about and it's a very loud internal voice Ra said that the 61 makes for crazy making i have the 61 in my, in my moon and it's in line three i have heard voices this is the this is the gate of hearing voices inside of your head um there's all this potential for explaining what you know potentially depending on your design so just be careful not to run down every single rabbit hole that you know next shiny object oh, over here maybe this person knows maybe that person knows if I can go this way or that way and then you get overwhelmed and mentally depressed because you want to know the answer but you can't find it or that you want to know the truth better word for it truth because gate of answer is over here gate four the truth you want to find out the truth you want to discover the truth but sometimes there is no answer sometimes the truth is just silence because there's so much in life that we don't know there's so much in life that is a mystery but if you've got the gate 24 now you feel like you're certain and you feel like you want to share yes ringing in your ears absolutely 61 24. um i've had ringing in my ears really heavily ever since pluto went into this gate um, this can cause ringing in the ears. This can, can ca cause loud, sudden ringing, if you guys have noticed over the last couple of years. Tinnitus. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> it's there. It's just there. Now, where we're going to go next is to take a look at this nodal environment. 
And the nodal environment is in a deeply tribal movie. Have you noticed we're all in very deeply tribal movie right now? People like us do things like this, tribalism, warfare. This is soldiers for hire, gate 26. 45 is the royal we, the voice of leadership that says, I have or we have to. When you look at the 45, it's about ownership. It's about dominance, you know, or submission, depending on how it shows up. And so we have a framework of everyone in the world being conditioned by to see things from right, wrong, good, bad, rules and disobedience and all of that moralistic value judgments, because that's what the transits are bringing as far as a movie. Who has what? Who owns what? Who is in charge? Who are our leaders? And of course, as you know, in, in the U.S., if you live here, we have a very huge challenge at work right now, despite, you know, whatever it is that you may believe or think about the people who are in um, regards to who is supposed to be our president. That is the story right now of people perhaps being able to find, through exaggeration, a manipulation of the story that they're telling you about who's right, who's wrong, what did or didn't happen. It's because of this gate. Gate 26 is a control mechanism. It's part of the memory circuit, part of the memory circuit. And that memory circuit is in charge of controlling how people remember things. So reframing things in a way, in a light that convinces you, this is about persuasion here, convinces you of who's right, who's wrong, who's good, who's bad. And this is, like I said, war. Okay, soldiers of fortune, Ra would say, with gate 26. And Venus is in a gate that is about standing up or fighting for something, fighting for a purpose, fighting for meeting, fighting for survival that is a higher game that we're playing right now, which is about finding what really makes life worth living. So what I'm seeing here, and you might have noticed in the transits, uh, transits in the news, <laughs> that my news to you is the transit, the news, you know, that we get from here in the Americas, you probably have recognized if you live outside of the Americas, it's very controlled. It's very, um, there's a, you know, media that it controls the way that we see things. So you, I have seen that there are tons and tons of National Guard in the DC area because they're anticipating that this balance of or this transition of power will not go easily, that it will not come easily, that there might be war, you might be feeling it, you might be hearing, you know, the call of war, people very disgruntled with what's going on. So I just want to let you know to be prepared, all you have to do is find your follow your body your personal decision-making authority. And you guys, personally, from my perspective, I've had a really hard time these past few weeks, months. Not only am I dealing with things struggling personally, but I also have activations here in this area of the body graph. I just highlighted for you some of my activations that are connected with this. And there's been a lot of fear in my own body fear of not being able to succeed because of the new regime that's going to be coming in controlling the way that we do things, you know, the way that I do things perhaps by um, installing new laws, new ways, you know, forced vaccination, forced tracking, higher taxes, all of that, whatever it is, you know, the mind and its story tells me, oh my God, am I safe? Am I in the right place? You know, because I have an unconsciously defined G-center. I don't know if I'm in the right place. I don't know. I as in the mind that thinks, therefore it thinks it is, therefore it thinks it exists. So my own personal process last week, you might have heard if you if you listen to the transit, I was like, do I need to move? <laughs> I started researching countries because my husband was like, well, there's Switzerland and there's Italy. He was born in Italy. I'm like, I don't want to move. Nobody's inviting me to move, you know? And so to be able to put those fears to rest, we have to come back home. My home is my personal, emotional, 
authority, my experience of my emotional clarity over time. So what's your way to deal with what's going on is in the world around us right now? What you're seeing is mass manipulation of the story that's being fed to us. Ooh, I can feel the, the anger. I had a really hard time with this, you guys, this week. Um, the anger coming up as far as what's happening in the world that I see in the world that I live in and feeling helpless, powerless, that I can't control, you know, anything on the global plane. None of us can. All we have is our own personal process of authority. So I'm going to leave that one to rest and let's continue on in our journey through the mandala wheel activations that are happening right now. You can see that the moon is in gate 22 and so is Neptune. Moon is our focus. Neptune is misinformation that the transit is bringing to us. So this is the gate of grace. It's a gate of openness. It's part of a channel that is deeply powerful, emotionally manifesting, potentially angry, and it gives us a level of attuning to what people really want. Now this is kind of hidden from us right now because Neptune is what is hidden. And the moon is driving us to want to communicate, but only when we're in the mood. Only when we have clarity can we really make ourselves clearly heard. Have you ever noticed if you were angry? I'm a cold thirst person. I'm a cold motivation or determination, you, you could say. And so when I get hot, when I'm not uh, comfortable either heat-wise in my body or hot as in hot head emotionally, you know, angry, as you could hear in my, my voice a little bit earlier, or I could feel it in my body if you couldn't hear it. I'm an emotional projector, so I imagine you could hear it. But um, what's happening here is it's about fear of not having anyone worth listening to. So have you noticed yourself tuning out? Individual circuitry is very much about acoustic energy and maybe tuning out, being deaf to what other people are saying, not wanting to be able to communicate or try to speak, maybe feeling some reticence there in socializing, of course, in this modern day and age of the forced um, lockdowns and COVID and the fears that they're bombarding us with to keep us uh, isolated and alone and not connected and together. You know, that, that conditioning is just there and it's something that we all have to deal with. So if you have an undefined solar plexus, what happens here is if you have a gate 12 on the other side, you might feel like you want to be social or not. It depends on your mood. You might feel touchy and nervous if you've got an undefined solar plexus and that you don't want to make the effort to communicate, to empower, or maybe you do. Depends on what you're in the mood for. It's an off and on switch, just like this other stuff we have in individual circuitry. So just watching for that, the misinformation that's being fed to us about socializing. That's my message for today on that. Now let's take a look at Mercury, Mercury, our communication and thinking, where we have the way, it's one of the roll gates, the way that we take in information from others. This is a gate of secrets. And so here with communication and framing how we think things, it's about listening to the secrets of the past, tuning into. So you can see we have two in the transit report, we have two activations that are bringing in um, qualities that are about hearing. One is about hearing truth over time based on your mood. And one is about listening to the secrets of the past, what people share with you from the past. So here, I have, this is an example, gate 33, line six in Saturn. I have the discipline to be able to tune into when people want to tell me their secrets. And I have the availability to keep those secrets without sharing it with another. I can share the lessons, but I'm not about sharing the actual secret. Oh, so-and-so did such and such. That's not what this is about, this channel. Unless you're a gate 33, line four, and you're sharing something based on, you know, your design that is correct for you, it happens. The not self of the gate 13 shares the secrets before they're ready, before it's time. So be careful of, you know, tuning into a secret and sharing before the time is right. What can happen is if you have an undefined throat center and you're running around trying to attract everybody's attention to something, and you've got the 33, now you're trying to atta attract attention to a secret that maybe isn't yours to share. 
33 brings us the dis or for me anyway the discipline the availability to recognize what is worth sharing what do we need to share because this is a stop code on in our genetics so is 56 by the way the buck stops here in order to share our personal human experience collectively so that we don't all make the same mistakes, so that we can evolve, so that we can thrive, be safer, and have experiences that matter, that mean something, that truly mean something. We have stop codons, meaning at the end of every genetic sentence, there are particular gates that are like punctuation points. So if you've got one of those punctuation points like I do, what happens is you're trying to attract attention to somebody's secret and if you're undefined in the G center and you're running around trying to find yourself in the lives of others because you're looking for direction and you're looking for love and you can't find it within so you're always focused without what happens here is now you base your decision because of some story or some secret that's being told that your mind is obsessing about and going, well, maybe if I go in this direction because this thing happened in the past, maybe if I go in this direction, I'll be able to find myself. I'll be able to finally know what my role is, finally discover who I am for myself if I'm a generator, for others if I'm a projector, what my impact is as a being, as a person, what is my higher self, what is my role as a manifester? And as a reflector, of course, finding your pure potential for the surprises in life based on your objective observations of what you're living. Be careful, okay? Don't use these energies just blindly. Do your best to be aware of the tendency to spill the beans, we could say if you've got a 33, and go back to your decision-making strategy. If you are a projector, wait for recognition and invitation, mutual recognition and direct clear invitation you can feel in your body from coming from the other and then use your own personal authority process. If you're a generator, you wait for the response. And as a manifester, you wait for your own personal process of authority informing you and form in order to impact. When you're clear through your willful determination, through your energetic power, whatever your authority happens to be through your spontaneous knowing. Now, as we move through this, there's another few places I'd like to take you to. I'm going to take you back to Venus because I didn't give it full attention yet. Venus is our values and our relating. Venus brings us the standards for our relational interactions. And here we have a gate that is part of the channel of stubbornness, the design of stubbornness, or channel of struggle. There we go. Correct keynotes. I like to try to be precise so as not to lead you astray, give you the full human design experience as Ra gave it to us. Channel of struggle, a design of stubbornness. In the BG5 language, we chose the word tenacity. Now, what makes one tenacious? It's the ability, ability to stubbornly go your own way, no matter what other people are saying. This is a deaf gate. D-E-A-F not death. Death is on the other side. This is a death gate. Okay, that's a fear of death, by the way, or achieving your purpose before you've died. You've, you're, you're, you die. <laughs> have that one. So what we have going on here is with Venus in this channel, maybe you have the gate on the other side like I do, there's a little bit of challenges that are presenting themselves right now as far as things that maybe are um, hard to grapple with because there's some deafness that you're amplifying. Being deaf is not a bad thing. It's actually a good thing in relationship to some specific gate activations, 39, 38, 43 are the deaf gates, that lends it to you blocking out auditorily anybody's opinion, anybody's, you know, assessment or the judgment is a better word criticism you're blocking out anything about what any beliefs about what other people think you should do or what they think is right for you to do so you can use this energy but what happens if you're not using it in correctness in alignment with your design because you have an undefined root center now there's some pressure to stubbornly fight to be very polite in that fight hey 
gate 38 is about the fighter. Line twos are very polite. And so we look to the other side. If you've got the 28, you have this undefined. Now you're taking risks maybe that are not correct for you if you're making a spontaneous choice. And like me, you need to sleep on it or you need to talk it out if you're a mental projector and whatever the case may be with the rest of the authorities. Wait for a response. So if you're making choices that are leading you to take risks that are maybe unhealthy for you, beware. That's my message on that one. And that, you know, watch out for, for war. Pick your battles, choose your battles wisely. You know, it's not about doing other things for you thinking that you're personally responsible, taking responsibility for others' survival or security, Unless you are a gate 50 and it's defined and they've asked or recognized or invited or, you know, you've informed that this is what you want to be responsible for. If you've got a gate 50, you have a responsibility. If you don't have the gate 50 and you're like me with this 27 on the other side, Mars, planet of war, is bringing a lot of energy, immature energy dynamics, and it's bringing mutation. And what is it mutating? It's about caring. It's about instilling, finding the response to instill the right values, gate 50, gate of values, to be able to make sure that our tribe is surviving, that our tribe is thriving based on the correct preservation and protection. This is the channel that is about custodianship. So what happens here in the detriment, it's about indiscriminate sharing. You're giving away too much rather than taking care of oneself first, rather than watching for your strategy and authority. You overdo it, you're overzealous, and so you give, 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 take on too much responsibility and drain yourself, get exhausted, get burnt out. Because if you're undefined here, very sensitive to amplifying energy and you don't know when enough is enough, therefore you do too much. Watch out for that. Okay, so on the side of the splenic, any of these gate activations that you might have, Okay, what it, can ha what it can do is lead you to take a spontaneous action and, oh, I might let go of something that actually really is healthy for me. Conversely, you might hang on to things, people, places, jobs, what have you, that are not healthy for you if your splenic center is undefined. So watch out for that thing that leads you to stay in unhealthy relationships, that leads you to, to take action based on fear. Fear is never a good place to take action from unless you're trying to move out of the way of a car that's about to hit you. That adrenalized pressure, you know, of getting out of the way when you're in danger, physical, mortal danger. So much of what's happening in our world around us is convincing us to live in a constant state of fight or flight. So we're all highly sensitized to this fear right now. I know I have been. How about you? I'm really, really sensitive to that. I have to constantly go into my own spiritual practice of going inward and breathing and chanting or meditating, doing something that manages the stress levels because it's kind of off the charts right now. Have you noticed? Have you noticed we have two activations that are here in the root center that are the start codon of our genetics, okay? Start codon, gate 41 is the start gate. Every genetic sentence begins with this gate. And we have Jupiter here, which is our personal law and protection in our design. And we have Saturn here, which is about discipline or limitation in our own personal design. Now, what happens when it comes through the transits? Jupiter is a very expansive planet. It's about the rule that the transits are putting inside of us right now. And for the transits with Saturn, it's about the constraint, okay? It's bringing us a level of restraint, you could say, although that's another place in the body graph. It's, it's pulling us backwards. So I'm going to explain this gate a little bit more because what's going to happen later in the week, we're going to have the sun in gate 41. And that's the start of our rave new year in human design, if you haven't heard of it. Human design doesn't um, match with the Gregorian calendar, the, you know, the, the calendar that we use as far as a new year. We begin our new year. We celebrate our new year when the sun goes in 
into gate 41, which is, again, like the start codon in our genetics, it's what creates a new round or a new cycle when Pluto gets to that gate, which is going to be in 2027, if you've heard about that. Um, when we start a new cycle of human experience based on starting a new round, as Rob would say. So gate 41, besides being a start codon, it's the codon. It's the pressure or the drive to fantasize, to imagine, to feel something deeply in order to grow, to reach to new levels of experience to make progress, to have a change in our human experience. So we have here this fantasy, perhaps spontaneous daydreaming, you might say, that could potentially come up when you've got a gate 30 on the other side and you don't have the 41, now you're amplifying all these desires. This is a deeply sexual stream where it leads to is feeling, I feel, gate of boredom, 35. I feel like a new experience. This is abstract. So it gives us a collective energy to want to share our experiences with others. That's why you hear me share. I've got this channel. I share a lot about my feelings and my experiences. And here, if you've got the 30, you might feel a desire, deep desire. You might feel afraid of what may or may not happen because that's what 30 does. 30 is a fear of what might happen, what fate might bring. And so the 41 locks your feelings down into one experience at a time, one fantasy at a, a time, one daydream at a time. It drives you to find pleasure through desire. Remember, it's the only gate that speaks to sex with love. It is about a love gate that is impersonal and it's deeply sexual. For people like me, I fall in love with people quite easily after I've had sex with them. Um, and I can't fall in love with somebody like deeply as a romantic partner without the sex. I need the sex. That's part of my channel, you know. And so you might find if you've got an undefined root center, a lot of pressure for a new experience, pressure to be stimulated visually by the sexual experience, perhaps, you know, we have this energy that that is the reason why we try new things, why we experience new things, why we, uh, as Ross says, this is the human experiential way, the human experiential way. And so we have something that's beginning. Can you feel it? You can feel it. Can you feel it? This, this desire for something new to happen. Yeah, this, this imagination perhaps of something new potentially arising out of all this chaos, out of all of this limitation, out of all of this confusion. The first step in transcendence is acceptance, acceptance of our limitation in form. All of us will experience this information that is streaming through our cells, three trillion in every square inch, every second. All of us are going to experience this deeply. However, if we can learn to use our decision-making strategy and follow our body, our personal authority process, this energy can be used for constructive purposes. It can be taken advantage of if it's right for us. It can bring new levels of mutation, new levels of meaning, new levels of remembering, new levels of financial um, perhaps experience where we can have different things on the material plane, potentially more resources on the material plane, more empowerment, more um, curiosity about the past and what it means for the way forward, more awareness, all of this, you know, it's filtering through us every second of every day. So the thoughts that are being thought inside of your head about yourself are deeply programmed from birth. Any place in your design where you are open to amplifying these energies, that's where the voices come from. This transit, it's conditioning as far as it's streaming through your cells. And if you take action on it based on the conditioning, that's when we get lost. That's when we stray from the path, our path. There is no one singular path. There's only your path. So do your best. Despite the constraint of desire and fantasy 
despite the richness of the expansive imaginations of what could be, come back home, my friends, come back home to your own authority. And Uranus is doing something very unusual, as it always is. It brings innovation. It brings a sidetrack when it comes to the programming of the mind. And what this sidetrack track is telling us, again, is in alignment over here in the sacral center that is about we need to care for our people. We need to make sure that we re are responsible for them. We need to feed them. We need to nourish them. Now, the sixth line is more aloof, more detached from this, you know, active nourishment. It's more about leadership, sixth line, role modeling. You might see hypocritical, um, innovative ways of trying to take care of our tribal family. And what comes to mind is uh, I saw a lot on Twitter about um, what is it called when we global universal basic income there we go universal basic income is based upon being able to take care of everybody so maybe that's what it's about we see people experimenting with that did anybody get a card in the mail this week I know I did I got a card from my government gave me six hundred dollars between myself for myself and my husband it's just the start of them, you know, the stimulus of them getting us conditioned to receiving money from the government because, you know, everybody's suffering and struggling right now. So maybe that's it, you know, the sidetrack that we have to care for everybody. You know, there are some people who can't care for themselves. There are some people who really need the support, but people like myself and my husband, we don't need that. We don't need that. Why are we getting that? I don't know. You know, why are we getting these things that it seems like a cause for dependency? And by the way, this is where we really find a lot of energy for codependency. I know I have it in the design, the 26, or sorry, so it's 27. I have the 27 in my design. And if I've got a 50 on the other side and we are in a codependent relationship, it is so freaking painful. But when there's a healthy 50 on the other side, oh boy, is that relationship for me very sweet and fruitful. So just watch, wait, what is, what are you, if, if you're like me, clear on as far as what's happening in the world around you? You're taking it in very personally, by the way, this is all my personal perspective. I have no grasp on truth. I have no idea what's going to come out of my head until I'm actually saying it. So all I'm giving you is my personal framing for what I'm experiencing in these transits and maybe, you know, inviting what it's, what's like for you, observing your process. What is you, what are you seeing? I don't have any, um, hold on what this means for you and your design. All I know is that if you're undefined in the emotional system and you've got a 30 or you've got a 12, you might be really, really nervous. And avoiding confrontation and truth when it comes to the new experiences or when it comes to the social interaction with others. Your place, it's our social and emotional relational intelligence, the solar plexus. It's driven by desire and passion and need. And what it feels like in your body when you're being conditioned by an other, it feels like nervousness. Nervousness about what may or may not happen. Nervousness about... You know, is anybody going to listen to me? Is anybody going to pay attention to me? That fear of silence. Thank you so much for joining me for this look at the transits, neutrino news you can use. If you would like to learn more about the human design system, please point your browser to humandesign.live. And as you can see on the screen, we have a free introduction to the human design system. If you would like to join other newcomers to the experiment and learn more about your human design, we have a lot of content, some links to videos, lots of free resources that are going to explain what human design is, how you can discover your body graph, the kinds of definition, our basic decision-making strategies, your personal authority, information about your public role, and then learning how to live your design. There's also a library of frequently asked questions that I will continue to add to. We also have some events coming up. As you can see, lots of Sunday sessions, which 
are a free delivery of the Neutrino News to the community if you'd like to attend those live and ask your questions. Next week, Sunday, January 24th, is an introduction to human design where I will be demonstrating a live video presentation in order to train some living or design guides that I am mentoring right now. And also there's a handful of people that are going to be continuing on in the living or design awakening experience as well. So you're definitely invited to participate. It's going to be a free Zoom webinar and we have multiple human design guides that are going to be starting living or design awakening experiences. These are limited to a number of individuals based on the guide and what they're comfortable with. So this is a live experience that you are welcome to join us on if it is correct for you to continue on in the journey of learning to live your design.